technology for 2020, we've got self-driving cars and 5G cell phones. Alexa, what else can we expect? Mike, we will also be talking about artificial intelligence, like me. Hello, I am Alexa. And I'm Mike Walter, sitting in for Anna Naidu, and this is The Heat. We all seem to know this. Technology is advancing at lightning speed. Every year, new devices and inventions move us forward. But first, we'll take a look at the past. CDTN's Mark New reports on what 2019 brought us. In 2019, we saw robots that moved in unique ways, and others that were hard to distinguish they were robots at all. Boston Dynamics unveiled a robot that could perform a gymnastics routine. Cloud Minds unveiled the XR1, which can make precise movements like threading a needle. But completely imitating the human hand is an ongoing challenge. The human hand is so complex and, and so good at grabbing all sorts of items, but there's billions and billions of different objects out there, and so not one kind of approach is what will work for every kind of product. Imitating the human mind is also progressing rapidly through artificial intelligence. One of the most startling examples occurred when IBM held the world's first live stream public debate between a human and an AI driven machine. The machine, Project Debater, drew on a collection of 10 billion sentences and 400 million articles to formulate arguments in support of subsidizing preschools. While I cannot experience poverty directly and have no complaints concerning my own standards of living, mm -hmm. I still have the following to share. Regarding poverty, research clearly shows that a good preschool can help kids overcome the disadvantages. The debate ended with polls indicating the human debater had swayed a greater percentage of the audience, but that the machine had enriched the audience's knowledge more. What the system was able to do, and it's very difficult for a human to do in a short amount of time, is get a lot of information and data. But the human, I think, was clearly better in building an argument step by step. For tech giant Apple, it was a somewhat uneventful year on the personal devices side, but a very strategic one. It launched the iPhone 11, which only had incremental changes, including an improved camera, but no 5G yet. But Apple did launch Apple Arcade, its very own credit card, and Apple TV Plus, a streaming service with its own original content featuring A-list Hollywood celebrities. I think this is the year that Apple really made a strong shift to services. I mean, the services revenue is now, you know, multi-billions of dollars. It's as large as, you know, like a Fortune, you know, 500 company all by itself. You've got a whole range of services now. And of course, what people expect is that at some point, yes, Apple's going to bundle a couple of these to try and make it really compelling. 2019 also had its tech controversies when it was discovered that recordings by smart speakers Echo, were being listened extra. to by humans. Okay. Employees at Amazon listened to what the Alexa personal assistant records in order to train its artificial intelligence. Google and Apple devices have also done similar things. They're training these systems and the way they're doing it is by manual input. Well, the problem is people didn't know that that was going on. They don't expect that, you know, their personal private conversations and inside their house of all places are going to be listened to by other people. And yet the, the funny thing is we say all this and people get worried and upset and yet they're still buying them in staggering numbers. Tech design went full on space age when Tesla unveiled its all electric cyber truck with a towing capacity of more than 6,300 kilos. But its claim of having bulletproof glass also provided the yeah. gaffe of the year, as its live demo turned out to be anything sure. but a yeah. smashing success. <laughs> well, maybe that was a little too hard. Yeah. Mark New, CGTN, Cupertino, California. Let's start our show talking about technology in China. Alexa, can you introduce our first guest? Yes, joining us from New York. Ray Wang is the principal analyst and founder of Constellation Research. Ray, in China, uh, we're seeing artificial intelligence being used uh, quite significantly. Uh, we have this example, Alibaba's uh, hotel, FlyZoo. Guests open their doors uh, just by using facial recognition. Um, they have robot uh, waiters as well. So what can we expect in 2020 when it comes to AI in China? 
Yeah, so AI has taken off everywhere, especially on the visual stuff, right? The ability to actually do facial recognition, identity. What we're going to see is more of an expansion of that, but it's what we call something called ambient experiences. This is AI not in your face, but in the background, building your next best action, helping you figure out you know, what products you might want. It's kind of like AI like Netflix, where the suggestions are out there, and they're testing for that. And these AI systems are going to get smarter and smarter based on your choices. So you get three choices. One might be because it's hot outside. One might be because it's something easier. And the third one might be like a wild card. And you get to then figure out what it is, and these systems will start to get to know you. So you're going to see a lot more personalization on the AI piece. And you're also going to see a lot of AI being put into place to help prevent traffic congestion or prevent you know, errors or prevent supply chain mistakes. And you're going to start to see that come also into the business sense. Oh, that's fascinating, isn't it? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to bring back my co-host, Alexa. Alexa, do you have a question? Yes. Ray. Many people are worried that artificial intelligence will lead to job losses. Is this a legitimate concern? That's a great question, Alexa. I know part of the challenge is, right, we got to figure out when we're going to use the expertise of a human, when we're going to augment a human with technology, when we're going to augment technology with humans, and when we're going to completely automate. And I think that's going to create a lot of different new jobs. The real question is, is it going to replace a lot of the manual jobs that are in place or the things that are more repetitive? And I think there's going to be a little bit of that, and there's going to be some transition, but it's not a complete wipeout of all the jobs that people know today that you need humans, because we also have to train ourselves. We also have to have a little bit of intuition intuition that comes into place, right? And we also have to learn jobs so we can actually identify when machines are making mistakes, right? So it's not all going to go away, but we're going to see a lot of automation over the next few years. Now, a couple factors behind that. It's tasks that are highly repetitive, tasks that have a lot of connections and interactions, areas that we have to, like, scale, and then, of course, um, all those things that require massive amounts of volume, things that we can't get to that overwhelm us, those in nodes of interaction, that's where we're going to see a lot of automation. Ray, I was just at a media conference in Beijing. A lot of talk about AI, but more talk about 5G. Of course, uh, we were expecting a big rollout of that uh, this year. Of course, then the U.S. and China kind of got uh, mixed up in kind of this clash over 5G. Do we see a bigger rollout in, in 2020, and how is that going to impact things? Yeah, we're definitely seeing a huge rollout in 5G. If I looked at the stats, somewhere between 40 to 50 percent of China's technology spending is going to be enabling 5G between the China Telecom, China Unicom, and you know the, all the different telecos that are actually trying to deliver on the 5G services at the consumer level. And what's different between 5G rollout at the, on the China side versus the U.S. side is the government and the telcos are really behind getting the 5G in to all the hands of all the networks that are out there on the consumer level rolling out in each city. So there's an estimate of getting something like four or five hundred cities in China up and running, uh, as opposed to in the U.S., this is a much slower rollout given the capital costs to actually do it uh, and given the availability of handsets. China's facing the same thing. The handsets are in place. There's only about like a 1% penetration on 5G handsets. I think that's going to change next year um, and once the adoption of those handsets come to play. But the real value in 5G is actually going to happen inside office buildings. It's going to be inside factories. It's going to be happening inside stadiums and entertainment venues because there you get 100 times the speed of 4G and more importantly, this concept called multiplexing. You can We'll see multiple streams of things at different times, right? So, for example, if you're out on a repair trying to fix an air conditioner, the repairman can actually, you know, get help online, break out a tutorial at the same time, see something that's being monitored by the machine. You're at a sports game, you can actually watch the game, order some food, watch another game at the same time if you want to, right? So we're going to see that level of multiplexing come into play, um, and I think that. That's really going to be the big shift for consumers. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've talked about AI. We've talked about 5G. It's interesting. I was just reading this. Uh, China's spending about $400 million on a national quantum lab. They have twice as many patents out there, quantum patents, in the United States in recent years. Um, they're also talking about blockchain technology. And this has been something that we've been discussing with you for a while now. Talk to us about 2020. What do we see there? How does that unfold? And, and how does that impact our lives? So we're going to see a lot of work on the blockchain side, especially in China. China is creating standardizations on blockchain. And the thing behind blockchain that's really important is that what you want to be able to do is use blockchain to remove a lot of areas when there's barriers of trust 
and also a lot of the paperwork, right? So whether you're doing advanced shipping notifications, whether you're trying to get a contract up and running, whether you're trying to do payments, right? We're seeing blockchain emerge as a vehicle to uh, reduce contracts, reduce paperwork, and hopefully um, in trusted environments, make facilitate you know, transactions much more easily, right? We're also seeing in places where you don't have a lot of trust, people use blockchain as kind of that surrogate. Um, that part isn't the part that I think China's focused on the moment. What they're focused on is enabling commerce to occur much more quickly. So those blockchain investments and the standardization that's going on with the Belt and Road initiatives, that actually is going to have a huge impact in terms of trading partners and in terms of the global economy um, as it's seen from the China lens. Now the quantum side is a little bit different, right? Quantum computing is changing the way we look at how problems are being solved. That is still way out there in terms of practical applications, but the pure research and pure science there, we are definitely seeing huge patent portfolios, a lot of research going on on the China side, and I think that's making a big difference. Uh, but together, it's these collective technologies of how you bring everything from IoT and cloud and 5G, mixed reality, blockchain, AI, all together in quantum, that's where we're going to see new improvements, new types of business models. And I think that's where, in 2020, we're going to watch out and see the intersection between these areas of technology, creating brand new types of services, brand new types of businesses. Ray, I don't want to squeeze out my co-host. So, Alexa, do you want to ask the final question? Ray, if you had to pick one technology for 2020 that will make the biggest impact in our lives, what your bet would be? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I think the technology on my choice would be AI still. I think there's a lot of work to be done there. I think there's a lot of work in machine learning, in neural networks. People are building the algorithms and the formulas, and those are getting better and better over time. And it's the ability to get to precision decisions very, very quickly. That's where we're going to see improvements that are happening in the background, subtle improvements that all add up to make a huge difference. Ray, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your insights. Hey, thanks a lot.